Now in Quixel Mixer, we're going to start a new project for our height map, our topography. We could call this topography. And let's make a new mix. I'll call this trash bag topography. We want to make sure its working resolution is 4K 4096. Click OK. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. And let's go over to layers. We're going to start off making two solid layers, one and two. I'm going to rename by double clicking on that first layer and just call it base. The second layer we made, I'm going to call it height. With that second layer selected, I'm going to come down to the bottom of this panel where it says add mask stack on this layer and click on that. Over here on the top right, there's these three vertical dots. If we hover over, the cursor will say load or save mask presets. We'll click on that. I need to carefully check. There's a little slider on this side that lets you scroll up and down. Look for that. Scroll on down to image to height. You might have to scroll down to see it, but let's come down to where it says image. We're going to go to select image. We're going to add an image. I'm going to navigate to my topography folder and come and find our beautiful trash bag that has been cropped and masked. And I'm going to click open. Okay, nothing has changed. So we need to see what we're doing here. We're looking, we've just made a mask. If we went over here, we remember we made an, a, we added a mask stack on this layer. So we haven't quite changed the actual image yet. So we need to go back over to our image here. This is the image that's part of the layer. This is the mask that potentially masks off blocking or letting through that image, or in this case, our texture stack. So here's all of the potential texture maps that build up into this layer. We've got albedo, metalness, roughness, displacement, normals, occlusion. We don't really need all of those. Let's turn off roughness, occlusion, even albedo we don't need. We really only care about displacement and normals here. So here we're going to go to the height slider and push that up. And we can see if we push it up, it's going to displace our texture map and become actual topography. Now I'm rotating around by holding down Alt on the keyboard and with my left click, clicking and dragging. To zoom in, I can scroll the mouse wheel or I can hold down Alt and hold right click and pull in and out. To pan around, I can press that middle mouse wheel button and move around that way. If I want to change the lighting of this scene, I can click and hold shift, right click and hold and drag. We can see the lighting and shadows will rotate around. We can get a better idea of what this will look like in different lighting scenarios. We can go back to our mask and we can play around some more. There's ways we can maybe increase this height by playing with this range slider. Okay, if we pull it up from the bottom, we can see how it's just kind of clipping certain areas, only letting some through. If we pull it up this way, it might get a little more aggressive, more um, intense highs and lows. It's kind of opening up the upper limit there. We go back to our layer and we turn off normals we can see just what the height displacement is doing normal maps again create kind of an illusion of 3d texture and help um, the rendering engine know kind of how light is supposed to break up across the surface is it supposed to reflect or occlude so the normal map helps with a lot of that but we can see it's kind of funny looking but let's look at it another way Let's go to our 2D view. And now if I go up here to PBR metalness, we can change this to just our displacement map. And it's quite bright. So let's go back to 3D view. Maybe we can come in here and we can see. If we remember white areas are what pull up and become high altitudes, and darker areas become valleys. So that kind of makes sense. Let's go back to our PBR metalness. So there's a few adjustments you can make here. Um, again, you can play with the height. Invert doesn't really do anything in this case. Opacity is going to 
kind of be a variation on height, but I would really recommend playing with height. And we'll go back to the mask and you can again see if you play with this slider here. When you're happy with it, we'll go over to export and we want to make sure our export target is set to custom. We're gonna choose a folder and let's go find our topography folder. And I'm gonna make a new folder now that we are um, kind of ready to go with our actual final height map, I'm gonna make a new folder and call this topography height map. And I do like to use underscores instead of spaces. And we'll go inside of that, select folder. And I'm actually gonna uncheck create subfolder since I just did it. I guess we could have let the software do it itself, um, but there we go. So this texture preset, let's change this to specular. I just wanna make sure that everything um, in our workflow stays consistent. It probably won't matter here, but let's go ahead and do it. We're gonna uncheck everything but normal and displacement. We wanna have both of those. The normal map, as we saw, is doing a lot. If we go to normal, remember this is our kind of pretty blue pink thing um, to kind of increase the texture. And we might be able to actually process that um, when it becomes our you know giant multi-kilometer landscape. It could become some useful information. So we're gonna export both of those. We wanna make sure before we click export to disk that our resolution is still set to 4K, 4096. Right now it's at 256 pixels. That's gonna be super tiny. It's not gonna give you a very um, smooth looking, detailed looking landscape. So we're gonna set that to 4096 and we're gonna click export to disk. It might take a little while depending on your computer to run, but when we're exported, we should be able to see our new folder. And inside of there, we've got two new files. We've got an EXR file and a normal map file. So that's exporting our height map. We can move on to working on some of our other texture maps moving through Quixel Mixer. This is gonna be the simplest because we really only need our normal and our displacement. And it really only took these two layers. The base layer just kind of providing a better visualization for what things are gonna look like. When you're done, I would also save, so you can come back to this and make changes if you want later.